to all of you. Really excited to see all of you here. And uh, this is the 53rd CME of Bharat Mission Bishop. And the journey is going on by the grace of God. And this is a very important training program series. And I understand that there are uh, more than 70% newcomers here. So for their sake, introductory part is really important. That's why this session is included as PowerPoint. Otherwise, I would have talked as introduction. But I thought before starting, I will tell you uh, about 125 presentations are available on the basic aspects of SBBA. When you type Ramya Krishna in Google, slide share, Ramya Krishna slide share, you will get 125 presentations on various aspects of fundamental attitude and approach of SBB. So this presentation, I feel, is really important to start. Why Ayurveda doctor should care about practicing science-based medicine? Before starting, I would like to appreciate the organizers of this session, I mean this seminar, because without their intense dedicated efforts, this would have never happened here. So let's give up and thank you. So why Ayurveda doctors should care about practicing science-based medicine instead of medicine-based science, instead of tradition-based science, I mean tradition-based practice, instead of business-based practice, instead of belief-based practice, instead of eminence-based practice, instead of legend-based practice. Always Ayurveda advocates science-based practice. Shastra Adhishtita Karma is mentioned in Ayurveda. But then why it is not happening for all these centuries? <coughs> Let's see. First, please. No, it's an advertisement. Uh, what is science? What do I mean by science and what science exactly means? Nowadays, modern medicine is distorting the definition of science. Let's not distort it. Let's understand science by two means. Science, when you understand the word, science is derived from the term scientia. Scientia doesn't mean statistics or data. Scientia means knowledge. Science is tested, verified, permanently proven and established knowledge. We are learning science in the school. Physics, chemistry, mathematics. We are learning something which is deterministic, which is unformed. We are going to lab. First we are learning theory. Then we are going to lab. We are experimenting the logics. We are verifying truth in the logics. We are confirming the observ based on observations. We are confirming the logics. That's how we are learning science. So it is meant to be like that itself. So it is established set of rational based on reasoning by cause mechanism effect. Science also refers to the body of knowledge itself of the type that can be rationally explained and reliably applied in everything. It's, it's not like yesterday science changed, today science different. It, it cannot be like that. Fundamentally science is that which can be rationally explained in all field. Then only it deserves to be called a science and reliably applied in every field. Otherwise, what we have learned in our fourth standard when we reach 10th standard, it would have been changed. Physics fundamentals, chemistry fundamentals, everything would have been changed. But that is not happening. Why teachers are not telling? We are updating. Our knowledge should change. We are only refining. We are only advancing from the basics. So don't get confused, don't get distorted by the extremely distorted way of misrepresenting science by the modern medicine. And I don't want to give a blind criticism and criticizing based on reasoning. Let's take this, understand this seriously. If you have any opposition, you are always free to object, I mean oppose me. Next. <coughs> so my point is Ayurveda is a science based medicine. Ayurveda incorporates permanently proven and established theorems and principles. Our Acharyas have not cheated us. They are giving us entire set of logics to confirm, rationalize, establish, <coughs> to get confused and clarified. So that for that, tattvas are explained, siddhandas are explained. In Ayurveda, medicine is led by science and not reverse. It's not like medicine-oriented science. It is science-oriented medicine. Next. Again. 
dinner. Okay, so Ayurveda advocates conscientious use of basic science in making healthcare decisions. So there are two kinds of science, basic and applied science. Fundamental theorems, logics, everything is explained in basic science. And application level, what we are learning? We are learning tattvas. We are learning, we are learning, see, uh, what do you call vidhi niyamas. We are learning nirdeshas. Tasmat satya bhi nirdeshe, kuriyad uhyam swayam dhiya, vina tarkena ya siddhi, yagarcha siddhi nevata. So that is all what is called applied science. Nirdeshas, vidhi niyamas, tattvas. I will emphasize upon shastra artha karma and not karma artha shastra. You do something, get some knowledge and call it as science. That is not the way of Ayurveda. It always emphasizes Ashtanga Sangraha, Sutra Sthana, Vereshaja Avajarani, Chapter 23. Shastra Artha Karma Anushilanena, Samskur Veda Pratnya. You have to culture your intelligence with Shastra Arthas, the rational which explain diagnosis, pathophysiological principles, tattvas, and treatment principles. Adha Adhyavasya Tattvecha Kaidecha Tadanandana. First you understand and learn and apply Tattvas. Next. And thus capable of accurate. Sorry, Ebo. Ah, thus Ayurveda is science based medicine. Okay, science based, evidence based. I want to call and add, add an additional word there. Science based. We were talking about science based medicine. <coughs> But Ayurveda is science-based, evidence-based. It's not like evidence-based alone. It is science-based, evidence-based. So what is this science-based evidence? Science-based evidence means Siddhandas, Tattvas, Nirdeshas, Vididhyamas. What to understand, what to know, how to apply, where to apply, why to apply, why this here, why not here, why that not here, why this only is correct. In this situation, everything is answered by science. So that evidence, what you get, evidence means reference. Substantiating uh, tattvas, substantiating vidhiniyamas, substantiating nirdeshas, which are explained in the science, which directs a physician to make accurate predictions or accurate judgment, accurate clinical reasoning in scientific practice. That is called SBE, SBE, science-based evidence. So the practice should be based on science-based, evidence-based medicine. So that is why we have coined a term called science-based, evidence-based Ayurveda, which is only Ayurveda as it is. Next. Ayurveda advocates scientific steps for deterministic way of exploring a human subject. Deterministic, opposite of probabilistic. Deterministic means you can explain the future events based on cause-effect relationship of past and present events. We will be able to get the connection between past, present and future cause, mechanism, effect, relationship. That is what is called deterministic. It is like mathematical knowledge. So we can calculate. It's like problem solving in mathematics. Exploring a human subject in his own unique circumstances and the impact of external environment. So, no use of comparing with probabilistic studies. Ayurveda thus deserves to be instigated in schools itself, in my opinion, to inculcate the fundamental knowledge of human being and his response to external environment. Next, please. Evidence-based medicine is medicine based on evidence. Am I right? Evidence-based medicine means what? Medicine based on evidence. Evidence is required for intended action of medicine in intended situation and not mere karma. We know that every substance on earth do, does some karma. Jagatyam anam shadam na injit vidyade pashan anartha yoga yoga. Everything will do some karma. Doing some karma doesn't mean that it is evidence based. Evidence means it, is, it should be in the case of medicine. It should be intended action by intended cause mechanism effect relationship. That is why 
Acharya called uh, Acharya states very uh, what you call what is Dhadu Samya Kriya Tandrashasya Prayojan Abhi Kriya Vir Jayande Shadire Dhadu Sama. Our objective of treatment is not making benefit Taya Kalpade, risk Taya Kalpade, benefit taya, more benefit less risk. That is not our uh, objective. Our objective is intended effect. Samyak prayogam sarvesham siddhi karma. Evidence in Ayurveda is primary level. It is not to enable the medicine do more good and less harm in a probabilistic way like in modern medicine. Yes. Instead, the primary evidence must enable the medicine do the intended. Samyak prayogam sarvesham siddhi. It should be siddhi. Samprapti vighantana is the treatment or objective and thus protect from every harm based on certainty. So science should have transparency, science should have clarity, science should have objectivity. These three things. Today's medicine, if it is getting discarded tomorrow, there is no transparency. One cannot explain. Based on observation alone, if you are explaining a knowledge, it is imperfect. Ajarya says very perfectly, Sharire Jaiva Shastrecha, Drishtarthasya Visharada, Drishta Shudabhyam Sandeha, Avabohi Ajarit Kriya. Sharire Jaiva Shastrecha Sushuda, Drishtarthasya Visharada. You should have proficiency, knowledge in Sharira as well as Shastra. Both are equally important. You cannot separate both and study separately. Is it not? So it is really important and Ajarya says whatever you are learning by Pratyaksha, Purvam Aptavadesha Jnana Abhyam Pratyaksha Anumana, sorry, Purvam Aptavadesha Jnana Pratyaksha Anumana Abhyam. So first you have to attain Aptavadesha or Shastra Arthat Jnana. Based on that you have to do Pratyaksha and Anumana. So it is very clear that primary evidence is Shastra Artha oriented. Next. Do the intended and protect from every harm. It's not do no harm. Modern medicine, the motto is do no harm. But in Ayurveda, the motto is do the intended and protect from every harm. It's not like do no harm. How can we do no harm without knowing how to do no, I mean, how to prevent harm? It's not possible. So it's a responsibility to know first, to learn first, to understand first to attain clarity first. All these are extremely important. Evidence in Ayurveda is not mere data to support benefits. Evidence in Ayurveda is systematic science-based knowledge which guided to do the intended on time and protect. Systematic synthesized knowledge should be acquired by every single brain of Vaidya. Uh, can I see below? By Shastra Artha Karma Anushilana. Ayurveda required physicians to be scientists. Our Guru Vaidya Bhushanam Radhavan Tirumal Parsa, uh, like Padma Bhushan, Vaidya Bhushanam Radhavan Tirumal Parsa, he used to tell this, he used to highlight this. Every physician requires to be scientist. <coughs> scientist is not one who is working on statistics. Science, scientist is the one who is absorbed in science, who is working in science, who is culturing his brain in science, who is practicing the true objectives, intentions, and uh, nirdeshas and vidhiniyamas of science and not scientific workers who handle data and call it science. Man the unknown, Alexis Carroll, Nobel Prize, Nobel Laureate, he used to tell the same point. So what is scientific workers? He wanted to call scientific workers for people who resort to this, what you call scientific, uh, I mean research oriented practices as means of attaining their livelihood, profit-oriented business. But scientist means one who is absorbing science. Next. Evidence is not data supporting the use of medicine. Data supporting benefit of medicine outweighing risk. Data showing 80% chance of certainty. So 20% die means it's not evidence. Credibility of shared experiences offered by experts in the field. I in Ayurveda, we know what is happening. That Mr. X, Dr. Y, Y, Z, he has been awarded best teacher or best faculty or best 
something. So we should obey him. We should surrender our intelligence. You know, there is a eminent uh, spiritual master, Prabhupada. You might have heard, is calm. So that Prabhupada, he is my guru, also spiritual guru. He used to tell always, don't surrender your intelligence. Surrender by your intelligence, by your common sense. Don't surrender your intelligence to anything, anything, anybody, any knowledge. Surrender by your intelligence. You have to apply your intelligence, common sense, and decide whether it is correct or not. So it is not, there should be a knowledge to guide us. And that is what Shastra is. Knowledge refined to guide the use of medicine. Knowledge refined to guide the use in specific individual. Knowledge refined to guide the use in specific internal circumstances. So it is very general to specific, right? It is not specific to general. Statistics, statistics is from specific to general. It is inductive reasoning oriented. Whereas Ayurveda is general to specific. It is deductive reasoning oriented. So experience based knowledge means it is not complete. Can I see below? Shastra Sahida Tarko Sadhanana Bhesha Javajaraniya Chapter 23 uh, Sorry, Agriyoshada Sangrahana There Acharya says What is the best tool for clinical decision making? It is Shastra Sahida Tarka Why Acharya didn't say Vivara Sahida Tarka Data based reasoning He told very Or Pratyaksha Sahida Tarka He didn't see He didn't tell that Instead, he told Shastra Sahita Tarko Sadhanana. So, this is the best evidence to prove that Ayurvedic evidence is not RCT. Ayurvedic evidence is not, golden evidence is not RCT. It is Shastra Sahita Tarka. Next, Ayurveda applies mathematical thinking. Mathematical think thinking is directive. The inference of particular instances by reference to a general law or principle, general to specific. Next. Statistical thinking is inductive. The inference of general laws from particular instances. Just opposite. But we are doing mimicry like monkeys. We are looking at what modern medicine is doing. Modern medicine cannot do anything like this. Deductive. Because they, are, they don't have deterministic set of uh, theorems. They have only theories. They don't have theorems. We have theorems. There are no theories in Ayurveda. If you tell Tridosha theory, it is wrong. It is Tridosha theorem. Pariksha ver bahuvidam pariksha. Kedu ver sadha ittva. Stapke de nirveha. So they are cause mechanism effect relationship. Explored and established. So it is based on that our practice is explained. Next. Why should we care about teaching Shastra Arthas and not merely Shastra? Nowadays in colleges only Shastra reading is happening. Adhyayana, Adhyabana, everything is there. But no clarity, no objectivity, no accurate understanding. So understand the algorithms of decision making in diagnosis and treatment. Explain in Shastra. We need a complete change, complete shift. Shastra Artha oriented education protocols are to emerge. Understand and apply Shastra Arthas, science based evidence. Translate Shastra Arthas into everyday clinical situations. We are getting new diseases, new patients, patients with multiple diseases. We are not meant to treat for one disease. We are supposed to reverse the patient back to health. So our responsibility is more. And estimate and confirm the accuracy. Next. Uh, just a moment. Estimate and confirm the accuracy of calculations. Effective communication of Shastra Arthas Bikkuri, self patience. We should be able to explain what we are doing, why we are doing this, what you can expect from my treatment, how many days approximately it can take, what is your role in my treatment, how much accurately you should be involved in your recovery, in your healing process, all this. Next. So without pertinent application of Shastra Arthas, there is no Shastra. So today, though there is a community to learn, practice and propagate Ayurveda, as they are not even getting to know about and practice Shastrathas, what they practice cannot be claimed as Ayurveda. 
you can oppose me this is my point there is a wonderful ayurveda community professional community we have degree pg phd everything but as we are not getting to accurate knowledge or accurate training to know and practice shastra arthas what we claim to practice cannot be called as ayurveda because ayurveda is shastra arth oriented next so this is very unfortunate bitter truth irrelevant and baseless incorporation and discussions about modern research methodology based on inductive reasoning and not deductive reasoning bio statistics in ayurveda should be diverted to deductive reasoning oriented basic science led applied medicine and inbuilt research methodologies and standards nowadays it is considered like ayurveda doesn't have any sort of research methodology like that the research bodies or policy makers are behaving as if there is no research methodology in ayurveda how can i say like that it is a grave most form of injustice to our proponents of ayurveda our acharyas we cannot be so like illogical we cannot be we are not obliged to our proponents of science they have framed this much vast and deep research methodologies but students are not learning pg scholars are not learning they are always in biostatistics i don't know why they have sunk in their brains in biostatistics and lost every logic even they might have had some common sense before which is also lost when basic science of ayurveda readily provides the solid primary evidence base for attaining pin point a diagnosis as we be practitioners who are here they know what i'm speaking about practically and on the target treatment guidelines it is true insult to the science and pure absurdity to blindly test blindly advocated treatments collecting data and pushing treatments next we know forward so it's not for emerging treatments it's for emerging clarity objectivity and confirmation of rational standards of science that we are supposed to do evidence based practice next we know this i think i have covered exploration all kinds of decision should be primarily led by science never misled by statistics amoodha balam apnodi yad amoha nimitta jam bai tattvas adha dhyavasya tattve cha kaariya cha tadanandaram it is to be noted that ayurvedic science incorporates sacred theorems below and not empiricism based observation based and sacred theories as in modern medicine next so we can make our patients to have full confidence that the treatment which they receive is based on solid science based evidence and not the fragile data based temporary evidence when we fail in doing treatment also we will be able to understand why we fail we can amend our decisions quickly next tradition is not science the currently followed procedure of ayurveda is based on tradition tradition is a set of beliefs culture ideas transferred through generation it will be my humble request to each and every one of you whenever somebody tells tradition you just think whether ayurveda is tradition then why ajaya speaks about shastra shastra arthas etc so it's high time to stop to remove this word tradition from ayurveda ayurveda is not tradition or traditional science traditional science is something contradictory science cannot be tradition the everything happens because modern how science is interpreted modern medicine that is the basic cause of all stupidity science doesn't mean statistics science means knowledge established set of algorithms rational doctors teach and treat based on their knowledge passed over through generations in contrary to solid science based knowledge so science based knowledge is uniform me you and everyone sitting over here can make uniform diagnosis and uniform treatment in a patient in a situation right now it is not happening 100 vaidyas will diagnose a condition in 1000 different ways this is amavada this is vada shonda for another person it will be mere sandigada vada for another person it will be something else like that it is going so it is it is very much wrong so this standardized decision making guidelines we have introduced 
for the first time in Ayurveda and uh, that methodology is called evidence triad approach that is explained in my book also evidence based Ayurveda. Next, yeah, I am going to conclude thinking outside the box after teaching the difference between tradition based practice and the very intended science based practice. It requires young and old physicians to question the currently ongoing convention. Below, copying what others do based on tradition, what forefathers did, based treatments, and to think outside the box and based on science. Again, my spiritual master Prabhupada and my guru Vaidya Bhushnam Raghur Tirumal Patsar, both of them highlights the necessity to question wrong things, to question the mistakes confidently. If we are making mistakes, we will be able to know only if we question them. So it is really necessary to question everything irrespective of and to question something we need to constantly learn and culture our intelligence. Next. No reason to compare. EBM studies in Ayurveda cannot be blinded because science of Ayurveda strictly advocates practice of Jnana Purva Karma, JPK, evidence-based practice. There is no reason for competition between different treatments. Whether Vasti is better than Sehavana or whether Yoga X is better than Yoga Z. No reason of competition because treatment principle is to be correct. So the objective of former is benefits outweighing risk while that of latter is reversal of disease and health. Next. Also there is no reason for competition between different treatment because science is determining the correct treatment. Each and every treatment is unique below and clearly intended for its own indications. What is it? Guna Prabhava, Dravya Prabhava, Dravya Guna Prabhava Cha, Tasmin Tasmin Kale, Tat Tat Adhigarana Vasadya, Tam Tam Yukti Martham Cha, Tam Tam Abhipratya, Yad Kurvandi, Tat Karma. So it is not like everything has specification, general to specific. That is the journey of deterministic science of Ayurveda. So science-based, evidence-based Ayurveda is an inevitable component, is meant to be an inevitable component in the curriculum of BAMS, MD, PhD, in all Ayurvedic hospitals, teaching institutes and research centers. As it is an area that Ayurveda medical students and doctors must pay close and constant attention to throughout their life for the optimum patient care and social satisfaction. There are multiple number of proposals which are being proposed, which are being submitted to Ministry of Ayur, CCRAs, etc., which are left under observation. We are kept in a, uh, an expert panel of musculoskeletal disorders also, where we have given so many suggestions regarding the crucial necessity to practice this, but everything is kept impending. We are not receiving any responses from them, from the policy makers. But if it happens, there will be a very big revolutionary <coughs> change in Ayurvedic education, research and clinical practice. And I am very sure Ayurveda will become mainstream medicine of the world, not India. It will be the mainstream medicine of the world because we can treat by the most minimum dosage of medicines as we know, SBBA, FDA is that fragmental dosage approach. Those who are practicing SBBA know this for time. Speaking about, so it will be a revolutionary thing for the whole world in the field of medicine. Next. Scientific infrastructure tools and methodologies are developed by us. All credit goes to Lord Narayana and Lord Dhanundari, who himself is Lord Dhanundari. And a training program for doctors called Bharat Mission Mission in the form of CMEs and workshops are also being conducted, which we are uh, now we are here for that to initiate the culture of evidence-based practice in Ayurveda and attain the mission of scientific prescribing all by 2020. This was made in some time before, but journey is ongoing. It's continuing. Next. Government attention requires so everyone who is sitting here, whatever you can do, try to highlight the necessity of practicing science-based medicine. Try to highlight in every opportunity you are getting it. You make use of the opportunity and highlight the necessity of SBB and OB incorporation in university setting, private practice, as a residency program, research institutes, everywhere this is required. 
Yes. Let us prosper by Shastrarthas. It's one of my favorite reference. Sarvam Charoga Prashamaya Karma Hina Adi Matra Vibarita Kala Nithyoma Characha Natam Vigaram Shantam Naye Pathya Mahitraita Charaka Siddhi Sthana So every disease, I mean every karma intended to reverse disease it should be done correctly if it becomes Hina Adi Matra if it is done in the wrong period Vibarita Kala Nithyoma Jara etc. Natam Vigaram Shantim Nayet, it will never cure the disease. Pathyam Abhi Prayetam, even if you adopt the protocol correctly. So this mentions the important necessity to practice Shastra Arthakarmas. Thank you very much.